COVID-19, we are all suffering from the impact it has had on world economies. So we have no position to deal with this, another influx of refugees and, and terrorism. So my request to the international community, to the United States specifically, uh, I know the Europeans are extremely sensitive. They understand the situation. There's a refugee problem, not just in Europe, all over the world. So everyone knows that this chaos will lead not just countries like Pakistan and Iran. Other countries will also eventually have refugee problems. But in, in much richer countries, you have two, 3,000 refugees, and there's an issue. The far-right parties raised this issue about refugees. But we poor countries, you know, who are struggling, whose economy is just about getting on their feet, how do we go with hundreds and thousands of refugees? So it is in no one's interest that there's chaos in Afghanistan. And that's why I was very uh, impressed by the Islamic Development Bank's suggestions of immediate, medium, and long-term ways of uh, helping the people of Afghanistan or making the economy sustainable. Uh, I would look forward to the uh, foreign ministers that you will come up with a roadmap by the end of this evening. And that roadmap not only should be pushed by the OIC, by the United Nations, by the European Union, and by, of course, the United States. Because, as I repeat, chaos in Afghanistan suits no one. And finally, uh, because I have uh, this platform of the OIC foreign ministers, I would just raise two more points. One is Palestine and Kashmir. Uh, the people of Palestine and Kashmir look to us. They, they want to see a unified response from us about their human rights, about their democratic rights, rights which United Nations Security Council resolutions have given them, and unfortunately not implemented. We should, on every forum, raise our voices and a unified stance. And lastly, I want to talk about Islamophobia. Unfortunately, the refugee crisis in Western countries has exacerbated Islamophobia. Islamophobia really started uh, reaching a dangerous levels after 9-11. When terrorism and Islam were connected, when radical word terms like radical Islam came, they connected somehow Islam was was responsible for terrorism and radicalize, radicalization. So this connection has made life difficult for people living in Western countries, Muslims living in Western countries. The man in the street in the West cannot distinguish between what is a moderate Muslim and what is a radical Muslim. So you have stuff like in New Zealand, a man walks into a mosque and shoots 50 people. It's because these this term, radical Islam, Islamic terrorism, they have to be delinked. And secondly, the reason for Islamophobia is people in the West do not understand when our Prophet Muhammad wasallam, is mocked or ridiculed or insulted, they can't understand the reaction amongst the Muslims because their attitude to religion is different to ours. So it's very important for the OIC to play its part in explaining to the Western world on forums like European Union, United Nations, their think tanks, making them understand rather than this gap growing between Muslims and non-Muslims because of inability to understand Islam, it is our responsibility in the OIC that we make them understand. Uh, we have in Pakistan formed an authority. It's called Rahmatul Alameen Authority. The purpose, 
The purpose is to have top Pakistani scholars